Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. Today we set on a journey to create as many resources as possible. It's time to get technical and develop some lore behind this world in the process. Creating a corrupted iron farm and using those resources to develop a sheep farm and reinforce our other projects already inside of this world. With unlimited iron, think about all of the cauldrons, hoppers, and chains we can build now. Leave a like if you're excited for the series and please subscribe if you're brand new. We're trying to hit 1 million subscribers subscribers this year and I really appreciate your help but let's get rocking yeah yeah it, it's it's been a while my fiance and I moved into our house last May and to be honest since then I haven't really done anything around the house so I took January as a bit of a month to get things done the house we moved into everything was tan and I mean everything and the big thing was painting my office this month so I turned all of the walls white and we only have this tan carpet left I'm still working through decorating so if you got any ideas let me know down in the comments but that's why I've been gone let's get back to some minecrafting we are currently on on day 300 of this hardcore world time has been flying by and i am loving every little bit of it i spent some time decorating the greenhouse interior so it fits the part now even using our only spore blossom we found last time inside of it to get the cool particles floating around from there i also built a custom oak tree along the edge of the beetroot field and finally planted in a tiny wheat field to keep the farmland region growing this is already looking 10 times better throughout here now for today's project i'm gonna need a large amount of iron so i spent some time mining underground to get a bunch of blocks to build with and most importantly finding some of that sweet sweet iron ore sure today i could spend the time to build a super omega iron farm that will produce 1 trillion iron per 0 0.067 seconds and never need to worry about iron but for me that defeats the purpose of minecraft which is growing with your minecraft world if we do all the insane things now what the heck am i going to be doing in the next few months but with that it's time to get started on this project minecraft 1.18 iron farm oh that looks tiny and easy let's do that Slapping the beds down to get some fresh villagers, it was off to do a little bit of villager trading. What is a wandering trader doing here? Oh, hold up, buddy. Sea pickles? Yes, please. And of course, a big old session of crafting all of the different materials we're going to be needing to build this entire iron farm. This one used a little bit of redstone, but overall, it's a pretty small build. The last thing I need here is three beds, and don't worry, I have realized that there's no grass in here. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get that sorted soon. So close, one white wool. We're on the hunt for a sheep. Aha, yoink. In the last episode, I realized that I based extremely close to where I spawned into this Minecraft world. Iron farm plus spawn chunks stonks and i've got just about everything i need right over here besides a name for the zombie but that doesn't even matter yet as we need to build this entire farm so let's get to work clearing some space and flattening out the land i pillared up a few blocks into the air and created a small redstone clock for our zombie to stand on top of the little piston right over there using a bunch of repeaters and other technical thingies of like dust i don't know it carries signal somehow but from there it's time to create the village or cell with some beds and composters and a box with some nice magenta stained glass on the outside as I really really like this color but I just never really use it so finally finding an excuse to do that this thing is so compact that at this point in time I had to grab a bunch of rails and started digging out a massive tunnel so that we can move the villagers up to our iron farm this thing was over 300 blocks away from the dwarven city but we did it and it's great and now I just get to place rails down on the entire way going all the way back from there it's time to move our three villagers up to their new forever home where they're going to be scared and terrified for eternity. Isn't Minecraft a nice game? First off, building the collection system over here so that we can get all of the sweet iron, then building a spawning platform before getting our zombie intact. I reached out to Joel to ask for a name on this one, and he wanted the name Joel the Giant Zombie, who is also... Ah, there we go. Perfect timing. Bring on the single zombie and no other scary mobs. Anytime now, we will see a zombie. Normally, I can't get rid of the zombies, and now I can't find a single one. Hello? Oh, there we go. I see some with the creepers. Hey, buddy, buddy, buddy. Yeah, there we go. I do only need one of you, though. Just one. Up this way, please, buddy. Come on. Thanks, Joel the giant zombie who is also hot. Oh, um, hi already. The farm works. Now, where did that dog go? Oh, there he is. Ha, hi, buddy. Hi. Do you want to be my friend? <gasps> you do. Do you want to be my friend? 
Oh my gosh, we got two puppies. Am I building an iron farm right now? Yes, but this one's very important. I need two names in the comments for our new puppo friends, and then we gotta get them a home soon. Back to the farm now, adding in some walls and some nondescript signs with hidden messages you should definitely follow, then placing in the water and lava before tearing away all of the dirt scaffolding, and finally adding in a ladder up to the chest with a final redstone torch, and we're done. I'm sorry, I know giant Joel got your attention, but I gotta get rid of you, buddy. I gotta get rid of you. It's gonna be fine. We got our two dogs over here, which is absolutely fantastic. We've got a working iron farm. You can see an iron golem burning up there right now, but we've got to take this to the next level. Why is there iron on the floor here? Safety measures. My goal for this world is to never leave redstone farms looking like a, well, redstone farm now that we have the iron farm built up and it's in spawn chunks we can get to work on gathering up all of the materials we're gonna need in order to build a really cool ruined watchtower around it starting with a lot more deep no i'm just kidding we went down and harvested a bunch of cobbled deep slate from underground before finally come up and doing a little bit of terraforming to kill some more time so that the iron could pile in going for a bit of a caving session here i found another geo that i cleared all of the crystals out of and got to work gathering up as much of the calcite as I could fit in my inventory. Unfortunately, it was a small geode. But I did find a skeleton spawner, which is pretty cool. Name tag, music disc, we'll take it. I'm sorry, you're in the rain here, puppy dogs. I'll take you inside. But checking on the farm here, how much iron do we have? Oh, I think that's more than I've ever had. Okay. Good news, the dogs are home safe and dry. The doggos can't live in the barn forever, so a new goal for today's episode is I am 100% gonna be making them a home. But first we need to keep breeding up the sheep because this is the only way I can make wool right now. Doggies, keep watch, I got an iron farm to build. Well, make not look like an iron farm build. Oh, that's my face, hi, how are you doing today? For this build, we are going with a bit of a ruined structure, so we're gonna need a whole smorgasbord over here of different blocks. I'm gonna need a lot more magenta glass to this one, and we've got two die. 14 die and the last flower of its kind. And I'm gonna try and keep it as tight as possible over here with a seven by seven box. Now a big challenge with this entire build here is we have to keep the entire thing spawn proof. Otherwise the golems won't spawn up there. And this entire structure here is meant to be super broken down. So piling some stuff up, we're just gonna randomize it doing a stone brick every other. And that's about as high as I wanna be going. Hi, buddy. Now, before we start on the main structure, I wanted to build up a white tower to break away from the giant rectangular shape we'd get otherwise, using diorite and calcite to contrast against the stones that we're using and then adding in a roof of the very dark tile deep slate, it's time to move on to the main building. First, building up the crenellations at the top so we can encase this build using a little bit more of the deep slate and a little bit of a case of trapdoors as we use those in the iron farm already. Moving on to the wall itself so the structure isn't floating anymore, I wanna bring in some magenta glass to be a sort of magic in the building, causing the farm to still be functioning and holding the entire ruined tower together. Continuing on with the build to the other three walls, I followed the same formula, creating the large crumbled down sections and backing them up with the magenta stained glass and a few amethyst crystals, which also give off some light subtly, so it really adds to the atmosphere, especially when you're looking at this build in the dark. Completing all of the crenellations at the top, I think I know my castle terms at this point in time, or it's very awkward, but that's my life, so it's okay. We are completely done with this main tower build over here, and it is looking fantastic to be able to hide our iron farm. Still being able to see the farm at work in these large windows of sorts, but at first glance, it doesn't scream redstone build, and that's my favorite part. The backside's open because I wanna add an extra building back here now, but I think I like it so far. It's looking really good. With the main tower done, we can get started on the next section right over here. But if we keep going with cobblestone and stone, well, one, I'm gonna run out, and two, it's gonna look bleh. So we want some of these guys. Thank you, and thank you, and you. That'll have to do it for now. Since I'm down here, I might as well do a little bit of glass training to repair up all of my tools and get a few more emeralds for ourselves. Much better. Oh, no, 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 no. Goodbye. No, thank you. Please tell me the mine chest has a little bit of cobbled deep slate for ourselves. Uh, there's some. Oh, thank God. Whew, there it all is. Oh, I feel much better now. It's a good thing I got mending on these boots because I've been making so many trips back to the storage room and back over here. It's getting really sad at this point in time. But anyways, let's move on with today's build. Starting the rest of the ruined fortress, I want to make this thing very tight. 
so each structure looks like it's supporting the other ones around it. With a small calcite decal on the front door and using some granite as a base to the main house, I also wanted to add a stone tower on the far side from our iron farm as well to balance things out. And we'll bring ourselves right back into the tower over here. Making this a bit easier on myself, I set forth with building the entire fortress starting with the calcite front. And then after completing a section, I would spend the time ruining it. Doesn't really make sense, but building the entire thing first helped my brain figure out how the best way to make it look decayed easily on the fly. Now we're talking, that is looking the part. On the brick structure, I want this to stack about five blocks tall and transition into another block. Adding in some holes as we go, then using the same style of roof topper in the end as we used on the calcite roof over here before bringing in our strip dark oak logs for the second floor. Incorporating another deep slate tile roof into these, except this time making it extremely weathered with holes all over the place. The final walls of the build are going up with the brick on the outside walls and the dark oak contrasting across the top before moving into adding some of the stone brick trims going all the way along the top and moving into the deep slate tile roof, which is looking so very amazing and ruined before finally adding in a few little clusters of amethyst around the place. And of course, a little bit of the glass in there as well. Right, we've done it. There we go. The main building is completed over here. Well, the central building is we've got the final tower to add on. I want to use a lot more magenta glass. And unfortunately, I've run out. Oh, hi, buddy. There's a donkey in the crack. Bone mealing up a bunch of the lilacs over here and diving down into the cave for trading for a little bit of glass over here. We finally have all of the magenta glass we're going to need. Taking out a few iron golems that escaped the farm, we are back to the build. Oh, I feel bad, but not that bad. Starting on the final tower here and back to the block placing. And I built it all off a block, so I'm moving it forwards. Ah, much better. A door. There we go, this guy's looking pretty good now. But wait, I built this pathway just to get myself on top? What if we bring a bridge out? Like stack up some tough around the base, then right out of the middle like here, and just disappear into the side. Yeah, and we continue the same thing along the sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just kind of ends into nothing. Or for the first time ever in a Minecraft series, we pull a little bit of a Skyrim here and just make some ambiguous ruins of cobblestone. It's fine. As if the fortress used to also exist over here, but now it doesn't. And how did you spawn up there? More ambiguous stone lines that could have been part of a ruin. Well, I guess these are ruins. Part of a old structure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now it's feeling like a building was once here. But there we go. I think we've done it. The exterior of the iron farm is now built up as well. And it is looking really cool. I don't know how that build took me over 17 Minecraft days to complete, but I'm almost out of food. I only have eight steak left. So cowsies, come on over. Yeah, we're all a bunch of best friends, aren't we? Look at all the love hearts. So many best friends. So kind, so, so kind. We've got iron in here, and I need all of the hoppers ever. Hopper line coming out right over here, sure. And going this way, we can pull the poppies out right here, I think. Nope, nope, that's the wall. Right here, except I didn't bring redstone dust. I'm starting to feel that need, that need to get out of beginning game. Minecraft and go get the elytra. All right, there we go. Redstone acquired and a torch. We put poppies and sticks. I think this will work right here because to start out, they're gonna come straight down into this barrel. Once the barrel is filled up, they're gonna move over to the side here, which will go into the composter. Composter will feed down into another barrel or for now a chest. <laughs> that's that's ugly. That is, ooh, that's not good. Poppy storage is complete, and it's time to move our iron into these double chests. Building out a hopper line back over there, and then it's time to decorate up this beauty of a build, bringing in a bunch of different wood planks all over the place, and just creating a small little room out of some spruce wood, and finally creating a bit of a fireplace for ourselves over here in where we had the big old chimney, just to bring things in line and add another detail besides just a plain old bare wall. For the interior of this build, I think we keep it really simple here and just do a little bit of cobble deep slate in front. This room can be some polished deep slate to break it up, adding in another archway and we could go back to the cobbled deep slate over here. And we've got a ceiling in here as well, and eventually we'll sort these guys out, but the filter is working. And the iron farm looks great. 
could we ship this right now and be done? Yeah, but we gotta do one more level. This thing's broken down, but there's no rubble or anything to attach it into the environment. First starting off with a road to eventually lead back home as well as to the world spawn before diving into creating some barriers along and bringing a lot of rubble into this build. Also adding in some greenery to look like a vineyard was once here but is now very overgrown. And there we go, this thing is looking pretty fantastic now. We've got a road coming out, splitting off right over here, heading to spawn right down there which will fix up eventually following our rule that we set at the beginning of this series. Everything we build must connect back to our base. But first, the donkey in a crack, he needs a name. It's almost as if I need to create a road builders guild in this world to help me out here as I spent over two hours digging out a roadway to connect back to the farming section, placing coarse dirt down with a bunch of spruce slabs to make it completely walkable all the way back home. Just for a little bit of decoration, I'm also gonna add a few lanterns on top of some fences. Next up, we've gotta plant a field along our brand new road because we haven't done that quite yet. And I'm thinking these lilacs that we've been using today are the perfect one for it. That pop of color up here is everything. Next up, I decided to do a live stream from this world here on YouTube. I've recently started to stream my Minecraft series over on the YouTube instead of Twitch for a few reasons I'll dive into on my second channel. But during the stream, I was able to get a bunch of progress done inside of this world. I unlocked all of the farmer villagers so we can now be happily eating golden carrots all day long. I present to you, dog butt. Nova. My microphone's absolutely perfectly in the way. Would you like to say anything to the internet? There are 4,000 people here. Would you like to say anything to them? I gave a bit of a preview for the next project we're gonna be working on right now, which is a sheep farm. I needed to travel around the world and gather up as much dye as possible, mostly brown for cocoa beans and green for cactus. See, this is how Jimmy could have survived in his hardcore world. <laughs> With all that, I found a bunch of sunken ships and got a load of treasure. And further exploring, we finally found Mesa. Wait. Lily pads go. Boat. For the first time in a hardcore series, we have a Mesa. Today we've built and decorated the iron farm, but we still need to create a home for our two puppos and moving these sheep to literal greener pastures. I made an expansion to the storage room by adding some barrels into the floor and got to work crafting up supplies for the sheep farm. With one sheep for each color, we need to make 16 pods. Down in the valley, I got to work right away creating the pods for each of the sheep. Small glass boxes surrounded with grass at the base so it can always regrow. Using the observer to detect when the sheep eat the grass so that they can be sheared by the dispenser moving forwards. I had to go through this process 16 times with so many resources. This farm is a lot more expensive than I thought it would be, but thankfully it's not too massive. As you can see here, we got the whole thing in place. Getting all of the dyes together before I can move forward here was a bit of a process. Thankfully, everything was obtainable after we got the cactus and cocoa earlier in today's episode, so I have all of the dyes available. We started the circus event of moving the sheep down the mountain into their pens, trying to lock them in only one at a time, making sure they all move forward correctly. Oh no, no, buddy, no. With all of the sheep in place, it was time to dye them all of the colors of the rainbow and some more from there. I tried color coordinating this farm as best as I could over here, and I think it look is going to look very cool in the end. Loading a bunch of shears into the dispenser, this farm is finished up, and I moved on to gathering up a bunch of oak wood so we could get on with building the final structure around it creating an even larger animal barn than our previous one to house the entire sheep farm. I'm using the same block palette to keep it in style as the shape and size are very different to the other builds in the area. So I need to find some way to make it fit over here. So you can see the cobblestone and the tuff and the stone brick and then the spruce and the oak and the works inside of here is working together very, very well. Breaking the roof up in a bunch of different places. You can see the little spruce one coming in over here with a bunch of stairs. And then I move forward from there to create a bit of a 
slab roof down the middle using some deep slate stone bricks to help break this up so it wasn't just all spruce across the board. Even with that, however, I found this to be a bit boring, so I made the front archway here on both sides their own unique shapes to add another roof texture inside of this one. Getting even more of the slabs in from here, it was time to move up to a second floor to break this up and make it a little bit more fun. The light gray concrete powder with the little campfire windows and everything like that using our same roof pattern around here, I found it to be super duper fun on top of this one before finally zooming across to add in the rest of the roof structure itself using in some cobble deep slate inside of this one, which I think turned out very well, adding a lighter texture to the top, keeping your eye moving upwards. From that point, I decided it was time to add two cupolas on the top so the sheep farts could get out. Yep, that was the whole reason. But hey, it looks pretty cool, so that's fun, and I'm very happy with how this turned out as I came up with it all on the fly, so I'm pretty impressed with myself over here. I also found a wandering trader selling knowledge shells, so I picked up five of those. Before moving on to the interior, I needed a few more hoppers and some double chests so that we could get everything sorted. Installing these into the floor, I covered it all with spruce and used some jungle trap doors to cover up the chests for easy access. After that, I wanted to contain the sheep a little bit better and showcase what wool colors they they had by placing a block of wool in front of each of the pods before creating some cross beams out of spruce and hanging some lanterns from them to make sure it's mob safe inside of here and finally filling in the gaps with jungle slabs to make it feel even more cozy and a little bit smaller inside. And there we have it, our super automated sheep farm is now finished up. We're getting all of the different wools down here and some dirt, but we still have a few sheep left up here. I was taking a look at the cattle farm we have up here and I had an idea. But first I need some acacia leaves. That should do it. And right where Mr. Wandering Trader is, I think we create a large pasture for some sheep to roam. Yeah. That should do it. This way we can have a bunch of sheep out here if we ever need to do some mass shearing operations. And we're gonna leave two sheep behind up here so that somebody at least lives in the stall. Slowly our army of sheep shall grow. You're in charge, don't let them die. There's only one more thing we have to add to this sheep farm before we can call it finished. The magical Jeb sheep perched atop of this beautiful barn of right over here, which apparently is case specific. Back down into the Dwarven Village, I got another name tag. This time did a lowercase j and magical happy things happen. There we go, rainbow sheep. With the sheep handled, the only task we have left today is giving our dogs a home. And I think right over here behind the cattle pen is this very cool cliff face. So if we have the dogs sitting on a bit of a pride rock, Looking out over the entire farming village, it's gonna look amazing. Today, I've run out of spruce wood so many times, so once more gathering up a bunch of logs before running down into the village to do a little bit more trading, as I wanted to collect a bunch of bricks for this build to create some cool chimneys. Terraforming first as I wanted to create that pride rock I mentioned earlier and give the dogs a little bit of a lookout viewing point over the kingdom as everything the farmland touches will be theirs one day. I want to create a multi-level building out of using some spruce and oak and then using a little bit of copper for the roof and everything like that, but I want to make it look like each dog has their own room inside of this structure so they can hang out if they want to or they can go do their own thing as you know sometimes we all need that. But coming up here, we've got a staircase leading up to the second floor and then piling up the floor and everything like that. They both got equal amounts of space and it's looking really cool from the outside. And now we have a home ready to go for my two best friends. Come on, boys. Look at it. It's beautiful. Okay, who wants top bunk and who wants bottom? You look like you want the bottom bunk. So we'll go ahead and put you right there. And number two, all the way up here. Yes, they still need names, thanks. Unlimited iron inside of a ruined fortress. Unlimited wool coming from our brand new Jeb Sheep Power to Animal Barn and a home for our two furry friends. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Be sure to leave a like down below and please subscribe if you are brand new. But with that, my friends, I will catch you on the flip side.